Hey everyone, this is Lomi, and I'm making a quick pair of pants for Rillin. These are part of a whole family of similar garments that were all derived from the same original piece, so you might hear something like this called sirwal, or salwar, or shawar, or Turkish pants, or Aladdin pants, or harem pants, or just pants. Or, if you're closer to my age, then hammer pants. I began the process by making a buttonhole on either half of the pants near the top, but that was a horrible ordeal because the buttonhole feature on my machine doesn't work right, so I didn't include that part of the process and I'll cover buttonholes another time. Otherwise, the next step is running a simple zigzag stitch along the top edge of both sides of the pants. After the top edge is finished, the two sides of the pants go together with right sides together. We'll sew the back curve closed, backstitching at the beginning and end of the seam. Then finish the edge with a zigzag stitch. Nice! Next we'll place the drawstring. I'm using a narrow ribbon for mine. I start by putting the string to the inside of the pants and threading one end through the buttonhole so that the end is on the right side. I'll fold over the waist and also pin the ribbon in place so it won't pull into the waistband as I sew. Then I thread the other end of the ribbon through the other buttonhole and fold over the whole top edge to create the casing for this drawstring with the string already inside. I use my pens to make sure the ribbon stays at the top of the casing area near the fold so that it won't accidentally get sewn over. I've had some people say threading the ribbon through after sewing can be difficult, so I thought it would be nice to present another way to do it. Then the waistband is sewn down with a regular straight stitch. Go slow and reposition as necessary to make sure you don't catch your string with your needle. I've wanted to make pants like these for Arios, but I figured I should try making them for a smaller doll first because it's going to take a lot of material to scale up. Either way, they're really easy to make, and I've opted to use drawstrings instead of elastic because I'm out of elastic and I don't know when my order will come in. I trim up my threads and then fold the pants so the front curve is lined up, fabric right sides together, and this will get sewn shut the same as the back, just the curve, leaving the lower part of the leg open for now. While doing this curve, it's important to catch your drawstring and pull it well to the inside to make sure you don't sew over it. Finish this edge with a zigzag stitch as well, which is what I would like to be doing, except my sewing machine randomly got stuck going backwards again. Might be time to have my machine serviced, because this is the second time that's happened recently. It's always something, right? Once the seam is finished, I trim up loose threads and go ahead and draw the waistband and tie the string, just to keep it out of the way for now. Next, we'll add the cuffs to the pants. The cuff is noticeably smaller than the bottom of the pant leg, so we'll first run a long straight stitch along the bottom edge of either leg, and use that line of stitches to gather the pant leg until it fits on the cuff. Then the cuff and the pant leg get pinned together with right sides together and sewn that way. Whoops, lost hold of my thread. I'm just going to have a bunch of problems today apparently. The second leg gets gathered and sewn the same way. These pants aren't part of Rillin's official outfit, which I'm planning to make soon, but they're fun and easy, and sometimes that's what matters most, especially when you're short on time to craft. Since Rillin has fantasy parts, getting him dressed is always a challenge. 
so I've designed these pants with that in mind. So the next step is to finish the inseam edges with a zigzag stitch all the way up the cuff to the crotch and down to the other cuff. Finish both sides this way. The inseam doesn't get sewn shut entirely. Instead, the seam should begin halfway between the crotch and cuff seam, so it's only sewing a couple inches shut. I mark this with pins and then sew, backstitching at the beginning and end of this short seam to make sure it won't pull apart. Clip threads and then we'll finish the open edges of the cuff. This is done by folding the edge of the open part of the leg by about a quarter of an inch and sewing it down, creating a finished opening. Of course, the first time I do this, I realize it's hard to see because my hands are right where you need to be looking, and it's such a small garment that it's hard to see anyway. So I'll make things awkward for myself with the next side and flip it as if I'm sewing left-handed, which I am not, and you'll see a little better how things have to be turned. You sew up the cuff to the meeting of the inseam, then down the other side of the cuff. This creates a tidy opening at the cuff that can accommodate a bigger fantasy foot. Now all that's left is finishing the cuff by folding the very bottom edge in a bit and then folding the cuff in half to create a tidy rolled hem with no raw edges. Sew straight across the top of the cuff, just below where it attaches to the pant leg, backstitching at the beginning and end. Clip all threads and turn the pants right side out. Now the cuffs are complete, with open sides so a drawstring can be threaded through these too. If you don't like drawstrings, you could also use a hook and eye or snaps or even buttons. But the strings work well for me personally. I thread these through the normal way using a little clip, but you could also sew these like the waistband with the drawstring already inside. And now they're finished! Fabulously poofy pants that are amazing for dolls with fantasy parts, and they're adjustable to fit any waist and leg size because of the drawstrings. That's all for today though. Thanks for watching. Bye.